Hello everyone, not up here. Today we're going to be making this uh, 3D mesh viewer. See, I can click and I can drag around and I can uh, uh, view this mesh in uh, 3D space. And we're gonna learn how to get this UI set up as well so the instructions can be shown. And uh, let's get right into it. Just a quick note, uh, future Nad Labs here. I totally forgot to mention that I got the castle sprite or like that castle tower trebuchet thing. Uh, I got that from uh, Kenny's assets, uh, Kenny NL assets castle kit. A uh, really amazing castle kit making 3D models for free. Uh, you should go download it if you want, or you could use some other mesh, like I said in that video, a cube, something like that. Don't worry if you don't have it, but I just used a castle one, or this one over here, because I thought that looked pretty cool. Anyway, back to the video. I'm really, really sorry, but you will need uh, some sort of 3D asset, like you could just go into Blender and grab the default cube, or you don't even have to go to Blender, actually. Um, you can just grab a mesh, like over here, mesh instance, and you can just grab any shape. I would, pref I would recommend some sort of shape where you can actually, um, you know, uh, see that there's a difference when you look at them uh, from different angles instead of a sphere which looks basically like a flat circle as you can see this one looks different from depending on the angle I look at it from but um, enough being said let's actually learn how we could make something like this I'm going to go over how Godot uses the UI in a 3D world so yeah, as you can see over here I have a camera I'm going to click I'm going to click control 2 to bring up a second view if you're wondering where I got that shortcut I actually got it while going over here to view and you can see over here it tells me the uh, controls so I'm just I went to two viewports essentially. And I went over here to my camera and I just clicked preview. So this a second camera is just a second camera in your world. I mean, you can have three, you could have four. I don't think you know, can, you can't have five, but basically the second camera over here is just another one. And I can control this one separately. If you're wondering how I went into like a first person mode, I just right click and I can start dragging around. But essentially uh, when, when you uh, click on the camera, as you can see that there's no camera button, but if I click on the camera, I can see preview camera. So I actually drag this camera over here. If I just click F to focus on this camera, I drag this camera just up here in the corner. And you can see over here, I can move this camera around and I can see the result. So I thought this was pretty cool, right? Like right about there, right about there. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good position. Uh, we have our mess. We have our mesh, which I will touch on. Um, if you're wondering why my world doesn't have a sky, I actually went over here to the default environment and I went to background. I went to clear color and I just uh, left everything as default. Like this is the the clear color you get at the background of Godot. So I just left it as is. And on our camera, if we add in any like no 2D, like let's say we add a line 2D under our camera and I just uh, quickly make a line, I don't know, like just a really bad line for a quick second. If I go back to that camera, it doesn't show up in the preview, but if I click F6 to run, you can see that my line is there. And that's basically how you can add stuff to your UI. You can basically uh, get your camera, add a control node or any node 2D really underneath that, and it will render on top of the camera. I say on top because if I go over here, and, and even if you saw with that line, uh, if I just drag the line over here a bit and drag a couple points over here in the center where that castle mesh was, or that castle object was, and if I click F6 to run, you can see that it draws on top. That's just something to keep in mind. And uh, with that being said, we can actually get rid of this stuff. And you can see how I got the... Uh, uh, the UI to show up. I just literally went to the camera, added a label. In fact, I don't even need the control node. I can just put the label there. And the label's over here. It just says move a uh, mouse around to move the mesh. And it attached it as my camera. And you can see it doesn't show up over here. But you can, you just have to get a relative size. Like over here, it's kind of on the left. And I have to be aware that when I go to my camera, I know that the label will show up somewhere over here. If you're making a UI for some sort of game, you might want to put it in the corner and Lo and behold, it will show up in the corner. To touch on the mesh, which is the meat and potatoes of this entire tutorial, if I go over here to my mesh, I actually made it its own separate scene. I wanted to put the script on the mesh itself so we can have multiple instances. For example, over here, if I do something like this, we can view multiple meshes at the same time. Uh, don't know why you'd want to do that, but hey, uh, this is what Godot is built around, making uh, separate nodes and stuff. So if we go over here, and ignoring the fact that this is a blank, uh, you can see that I did something a little different. I went... I put a spatial down and then I put a mesh instance. You might be wondering, Nadlabs, why didn't you just put a mesh instance down? That's because if we look into the code, the code is super simple. Like there's there's like it, there's no point in me making a proper like legit tutorial where I copy paste like certain lines. Like this is it. We just say if our action is press click, which we go over here to our input map and we can define click like this, right? And for me, I put click as just a mouse button. If the action is just press, press is going to be equal to true. And if we just release the mouse, so like if we just let go of the mouse, pressed is going to be equal to false. That's nothing hard. Like this is simple stuff. This is basic logic. Like you don't even need to know how to program. You just need to know how to read English to understand uh, this block. Like if we just press, set pressed equal to true. If we just release, let pressed equal to false. Where the meat and potatoes is, is this input function. Because this input event 
If it is event mounts motion, we have access to something called event.relative. And I believe I explained what event.relative is, but if I just go over here and type in print, uh, in fact, I'll do print outside the if statement, and I'll just do event.relative. You can see that um, I spelled it wrong, but you can see over here that event.relative didn't really show up in the um, type ints. And that's because if we go over here to our input event mouse motion and I control click it to go to the documentation, event.relative is in a property that we can access of input event mouse motion. And the way we can access it is by saying if our event is an input event mouse motion, then we can access our event.relative. And because in this tutorial or this project, I'm only doing mouse motions, I will have access to event.relative. As you can see, um, I just I was just typing and I was just clicking the a, uh, WASD. It said I cannot get um, uh, I cannot get relative. But if I go over here and now that I'm pressing, yeah, there's event.relative. And even though I'm clicking the keyboard, uh, Godot runs this uh, function. Let's say when I click the keyboard and it says, is this a event mouse motion or is pressed equal to true? At, in both cases, it's false. So just go over here and do nothing because there's nothing else to find because um, I'm pressing the keyboard. But if I'm pressing the mouse, you can see I have access to event.relative. If you, if you just look at my mouse and then look at the numbers, I'll just bring my mouse closer. If I move my mouse really fast, uh, the numbers are big. If I move my mouse really slowly, the numbers are small. So event.relative has something to do with, it has something to do with the position our mouse was just in, uh, subtracted by where it is now. So that's basically what I got. And um, mouse position relative to the previous position or position last frame. and if we say that event.relative.y is going to be equal to our rotation, or we add it to our rotation, then if I just comment these two lines out, you can see that uh, we get something where if our we move our mouse, like if I'm pressing and moving the mouse, you can see that I'm just rotating it. The reason we have to do plus equals is because if I do equals, right, then we're basically just moving it a little bit. Like we're moving it and then it goes back to zero because if you think about what event.relative is, right, if I move it, right, of course I get big numbers and that's when I what happens when I go up and down really fast. But if I'm getting small numbers, then I'm going to be moving slowly, but they don't accumulate over time. How do I make it accumulate over time, which means add up over time? I can just put a plus and now you can see I can move my mesh around just by clicking and then dragging. Now you might be wondering rotation.x, what's rotation.x? Well, if you go over here, you have to pay attention. I'm doing rotation.x, not mesh instance.rotation. I'm doing rotation.x. Uh, what's dot x? Well, in 3D space, there's three components to a rotation, the x direction, the y direction, or it makes more sense if I was like this, the y direction, and the z direction. All of these work to make a rotation to be very careful when you rotate stuff in 3D space, because if you rotate them willy nilly, you can see over here, we have a GIF by drummy fish, uh, which uh, just explains what happens in gimbal lock, which is what happens when you basically rotate uh, two uh, axes and they become locked and it there's an issue like with rotating stuff if you keep rotating the same object and what i'm trying to get at is if i go over here and i do rotation.y if someone was trying to make this uh, tutorial or this project by themselves they might the first instinct and my first instinct was also to do rotation.x and rotation.y but the issue is when you do that you can see that i'm rotating it and i'm getting weird results like i'm, I'm going up and I, I don't know, I just found it to be a lot more air, like weird because depending on where I rotate it, as you can see, like I'm, I'm dragging down and the castle is actually going down. But if I flip it um, vertically or around and I'm trying to my best to like flip it, you can see now the castle is going up. Whereas just a second ago, if I was on the right side of the castle, it's going down. But over here on the left, if I can drag it around, uh, it's going down. It's still going down on the other side. And the reason it's just a little bit more confusing. So we have to do mesh instance dot rotation dot Y because we can rotate, we can rotate this all we like, but now the mesh, the mesh by itself will do its own thing. It will do its own thing regardless of how it was rotated before. We obviously don't want to rotate the same axis we rotated on our parent because that would just be uh, really confusing. So we have to do mesh instance dot rotation dot Y. And now you can see that we can rotate our mesh perfectly fine. So uh, it's a lot easier to control. Um, it might not be that apparent on a recording, but uh, when controlling it as an actual user, it's a lot easier to control it um, with this uh, set of code over here.
and I'm just going to break it down even further. The reason we have to do ma uh, times a, a small number is because this is actually the mouse sensitivity. If you saw that event dot relative is actually quite a big number, like 11 degrees, like we're doing rotation and radian. Uh, you can see something like this was about one radian. And this is quite a large angle, like this is pretty big. So if we don't multiply by a small number, we get something like this. We can see that it's just going haywire. And you can see if I bring it back and do a slightly smaller value, it will be less haywire. Like I can still kind of control it. So that's why we have to just multiply it by a small value. And with this, you can make your own uh, 3D mesh viewer, like something like uh, Blender almost, or some sort of 3D object viewer like in Windows. For example, if I go over here, uh, this is the Windows 10 3D object viewer. I don't know why they included it, but hey, I mean, uh, they, I, th I think 3D printing was really big back when Windows 10 was released or it was really hyped up. So I guess they included it, but basically we have the fundamentals down, which is just moving the mesh when you uh, rotate it. And in fact, we're rotating the mesh over here. Over here in Windows 10, we were just uh, uh, going around the mesh. So kind of a little bit of a different program. This is just hopefully a really quick tutorial on uh, understanding UI and uh, rotating stuff in 3D space. And with that, I have nothing else to say. Have an amazing day. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I will try my best to help.